Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I have the pleasure to introduce you to the printing world somehow. So we, we're a kind of a strange company, not only because we are based in Switzerland, but also because we are still dedicated to print. And uh, I would like to show you how we got in touch with the digital world as well. And this is quite a, a huge step we have taken to, and there's still some challenges which are coming up. First, a few words to the company. Uh, we are based in Switzerland. We have uh, our headquarters uh, in Switzerland, but we also have uh, subsidiaries in Germany, like uh, Mirko here uh, from Core Lab. And uh, we work for the publishing industries for, or since ages here. And we are the market leader as a system integrator for, for publishing systems. And we have many, many references of installations, uh, mainly in Switzerland, Germany, and Eastern of Europe, and even to installations in China. But that's a different story there. And we do everything. Not only, we are not only developers, but we do everything in, in a single process uh, of the publishing. And we choose the best solutions to integrate. We are not only dedicated to one single solution here. This is very important. And we also do our own developments and uh, we develop uh, also customer requirements. And last but not least, uh, we are uh, one of the most successful partners of Woodwing Enterprise. And I mention this because I show you uh, a few steps around that Woodwing Enterprise editorial system. But I would like to tell you the story from the beginning. And uh, we work a lot uh, in newsrooms, in, in environments where journalists are layouters and, and all these kind of people who are making newspaper and magazines every day. And when we started some years ago, or when the first newsrooms raised up, that was still journalists and layouters, they were using Word as a, as a text editor and they were using uh, something like Quark Express or InDesign as a layout software and they made a newspaper every day. And beside that, there was a separate organization, most probably in a different uh, uh, building or, or at least in a different floor. Those people were not talking to each other. Uh, I would say the the print people up here, sorry for that, that was too, too fast. The print people were more uh, than 50 years old uh, and something like more. And the online people here, they were 20, 25 years old. And many of the publishers tried to merge those different organizations, but it's also a cultural uh, exchange and that's a, that's a huge step. But when we came up to the newsroom 2.3 point, whatsoever they, they call it, we had something which turned completely the process to the other side. Then we had to create content in a, some kind of uh, neutral way, in a channel neutral way. The journalist didn't know maybe at that point of time whether his story would be published in a print magazine, newspaper, or on a website. So there were a bunch of journalists, and we had a bunch of producers that could be a uh, web designer, could be app specialists, or could be layouters here. And the journalists, they had some kind of mess about what tool should we be using now. So they came from different cultures. So some of them were still using their Word document or their Word application. Some of them had InCopy, that's, that's the counterpart of InDesign. Some of them were using any of those nice uh, web uh, editors here. But that no one was really happy with that. And we were looking for the holy grail. Maybe we found it. We didn't find the infinite life, but we find a great solution here with our uh, partner Woodwing. And important thing here is that uh, this little sign here changed the whole world. So we got the new editorial system based on HTML5. 
And we had all the workflows in here. We could define users, roles, rights. Uh, we had different status. That means we had a production workflow which we could set up within the system here. We connected a DAM system to the editorial system. And the main part from an editor side was an editor based on HTML5, which I will show you in a second. So my previous speaker showed you the nice uh, editing part uh, in any web CMS actually today. We have something totally different here with the digital editor. And the interesting thing is that we were able to serve digital channels with the same content, and we were able to serve InDesign pages with the same content. So we just delivered the structure, the content, and we were able to serve any of those channels here. And now you have to watch very carefully, because I show it in a very speed up process how to create an article with that HTML editor. So we have components which we can add to our story. We add images via drag and drop. We can format the text. We have style sheets on the right hand side. We can add new components like image galleries, like videos, like everything text formatting components like a quote here. We can align the text. <coughs> so this is a very easy way to creating a story which is not only title, uh, lead, body, but it's uh, quite a complex structure of that story. So it's created, it, the base is uh, HTML5, but uh, there's more behind that. And for example, uh, to publish this uh, specific story <coughs> to a certain channel is very, very easy. Uh, we only have to define the publishing channel once. We choose the target here, and we publish this particular story to a web CMS, in that case to Thunder. So very easy process. We only have to define once the way where you have the output. So the article is in here. You, you define whether it has to come on a landing page or wherever the story should be published at. So very easy. Story publishing to uh, web CMS. But we could also story, uh, publish the same story to an app, to an HTML5 app, which we have seen this afternoon already. This is Purple DS from Spry Lab taking the same content with the same structure and going into an app within seconds. <coughs> yeah, open up the tablet. We have the story here. And because it's also based on HTML5, very easy, we have everything in here. So, very handsome. Very easy. Next thing is publish the same story to an InDesign page, which is a bit more complex. We are connected to Woodwing Enterprise, the editorial system behind. Choosing the specific publication, the issue date, things like that, which are coming from the editorial system. And then we change to InDesign and now we have a plugin here which allows us to show the content. We have all the images also from a slideshow. We have the text in, in a certain structure and we just drag and drop the components onto an InDesign page and we have also done the print product. Why can we do this? We are using a specific format which is called PSV hasn't got anything to do with uh, that football team <laughs> from Holland, uh, PSV Eindhoven, but it's actually a com combination of XML for the structure and of HTML5 for the content. And it's a, a standard solution, an industry standard for 
multi-channel publishing. So we are using this kind of format so we are able to deliver to any channel. So that was when we first had our contact actually with Drupal or with Sounder. So, and then we had our environment here as I just showed you and we were serving all these different channels using assets from our TAM, did print part here. And then we were talking to the team of Ingo and he said, well, uh, we have been talking to our customers. They were very happy with the uh, Sounder environment and they asked us about but how do you do print publishing from Sounder? And we from ANDEF haven't thought about publishing so, to the web uh, platform uh, indeed and Burta hasn't done much of a thinking about the print channel. So we came together and uh, we started to do our really first steps here. And connecting to the dam, that was the first very uh, start with uh, Drupal and Woodwing Enterprise connecting together. Miro Dietiker, he's also an attendee here at the conference, was doing this uh, for a customer doing Drupal and Elvis together. Elvis is not more than a, a dam system based on Elasticsearch, um, can hold every uh, kind of types, images, videos, PDFs, archives, everything. So uh, there's a, a huge dam beyond. And what Miro has done is connecting Drupal to Elvis, that means that we were able from this point of time to select a asset from Woodwing, Enterprise and Elvis, connected those two together. So Drupal was able to hook on Elvis, I'm choosing an image here, and add it to my story on Drupal. So that was the very, very first thing we were able to realize. And then was that print thing we, we always had in mind, but we, we didn't really know how to do this. So we knew we are, want to start from Thunder and we want to come somehow to the InDesign page here. And then we were thinking about how to do this. Uh, we thought that we might using snippets from Adobe InDesign. And Mirko is also here, our CEO of Core Labs, and he's one of the brains uh, behind this idea. And that was the following. First, I had to take an InDesign document and to tag all the different elements on an InDesign page. So. The, uh, we have to know what's a title, what's a lead, what's body text, which are the image components, the different ones, the bylines. Once you have to define all the different elements of an InDesign page. So that takes a few seconds here until it's finished. <clears throat> so every single element has to be defined uh, and to tagged. And then we are able to having a look at the XML structure of this story here. And what we can do now is taking the whole element here and creating a snippet with all these elements. Just drag and drop them onto the desktop and now we have a, an IDMS format. A in design snippet. So this is uh, work which has to be done one time per structure you want to reuse in your workflows. And then if you have that snippet, you have 
to do the tag mapping. And that means that you have all the different XML codes here. You have to assign every single component to a different tag. So there's a, a bunch of uh, those tags now. They are all already mapped. And now we are able to producing a template, an InDesign template here. We assign the template, define how the page should look like, and save it back into the system. So this is all the different components we have here. We can do a sorting with the components. That means if an editor takes the template afterwards, he has a certain structure within his article here. So this is also some effort you have to do once in order to get the structure content which you are able to using from Thunder. Last thing we are missing is uh, the connection to the print side now. <clears throat> we are adding a new print article. These are the different uh, templates here. So and now we have the structure we predefined in our workflow. So we can fill in the different fields. Take some content. We can using the style sheets coming from the XML, from the InDesign document. So you don't have to, de to redefine those. And you assign all the images to that structure. All the needed images you can assign to this structure here. So that's how you are producing a story based on an InDesign snippet and doing this in Thunder. So it's a, it's a double uh, page, a double InDesign page, so it has quite some work to do here to fill every single component and to add all the images to that side. And then you save it back. And now we have a structured article here. And the nice thing you get here is now that you have a preview of that InDesign page, which is rendered by the InDesign server. So every change you do within your structure content, you will see on an InDesign page. So you have to do that uh, update manually right now, but you could also connect to the InDesign server on a certain automatic process. And if you do changes in a left-hand side and update the preview, you see the live page, you have changed the title there, it reflects on the InDesign snippet here. We do some layout changes uh, in the content and make an update and have the updated snippet here. You just drag and drop the snippet to the InDesign page then. And so you are able to have something like a preview of your Thunder story. But then we, we, we thought about, well, that, that could be one step uh, going out from Thunder to a print publication. But we have more than only one channel which we would like to serve. We would like to use Thunder as the content hub for all the different channels here. One tool which uh, we developed this Brickswire. <clears throat> it's an optional tool here, but Brickswire could do some transformation, uh, taking content from input channels and bringing them out to output channels. Uh, structure transformation, content transformation, whatever is needed. We have our editorial system, Woodwing Content Station here. We could also think about using that HTML editor within Thunder. That would be um, probably a nice idea. 
we go uh, one step further, taking a dam to the whole environment, having here the purple solution, the Apple so the app from Spry Lab integrated into our content hub. We could also using DeskNet as a planning and uh, resource planning tool integrated in Thunder. The interface already exists. Uh, we put content out to the web page here. Uh, we have wire services connected to Thunder. We transform them with Bricks wire. Uh, we deliver content from here, from Thunder to print. So we have a, some kind of ecosystem which is still at the very beginning, but uh, there's a lot uh, of more applications to connect here to this environment. Our goal is to using Thunder as a central hub for content creation, management, conversion, distributing, all these processes around publishing. So, in the, in the middle of stands, all the content coming in from the different systems, everything is uh, centralized in Thunder. We have different input channels, as many as we like, and of course, we deliver all the different output channels, like web page, uh, social media, whatsoever app. So we would like to create an ecosystem around Thunder, and build that centralized data transformator, um, provide a channel neutral content creation tool, and import any data from any source into that ecosystem and publish to any channel out of Thunder. Beyond that, we will have a modular pricing. It's, I know we are in an open source community here. What we do, this is, this is integration work. There will be a price tag uh, behind these services here. And uh, we will come up with that uh, in the next couple of weeks, I would say. So that was it. Some kind of different publishing coming from a totally different side and I hope it has given you some new ideas here. Thank you very much. Join the Thunder Coalition now. Spread the word, contribute and benefit.